What's up, guys? This is Josh back here from Inside Wrestling Truth. Uh, what's your final Royal Rumble review before the Royal Rumble? Um, I might do another one. I don't know yet. But this one is January 19th, 1997, San Antonio, Texas, at the Alamo Dome. Um, this is Royal Rumble 1997. Um, this Royal Rumble was better than, in my opinion, 95 and 96. Uh, had some really good things, you know, going on in it. Um, but let's just break it down. Um, sorry if I'm not real enthused. Uh, today I'm a little bit under the weather so but I'm gonna do this the best I can um, we open up the show with a cheesy ass Shawn Michaels promo um, you know they're in his hometown of San Antonio Texas um, and then we go to see it is also in the promo and they're talking about the WWF title um, they show a little clip of Sid with the belt, but the whole goddamn thing is about Shawn Michaels. Of course, it's going to be. It's in his hometown. Uh, but it's real cheesy, real cheesy, man. Um, then we go to JR, Jim Ross, Vince, and Lawler open up the commentating team. And uh, then we go straight to action. We have the Intercontinental title match. We have uh, Gold Dust. Versus Triple H for the IC title. Uh, Triple H is uh, escorted to the ring by Mr. Hughes. Um, this match was very good. Back and forth. Uh, several times you thought Goldust was going to win. Several times you thought Triple H was going to win. Uh, Mr. Hughes actually gets uh, the cigar... Uh, put out on his neck. I'm sure it was out, guys. Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of uh, scuffling with the managers back and forth. Uh, they would get hit with the belt. Goldust had this match won, but the referee was distracted by Mr. Hughes. And uh, Triple H would hit him with the pedigree. They didn't get the win. I gave this match three stars out of five. I thought it was a very, very good opening match. Royal Rumble 97 um, then we have a Bret Hart promo um, this is right before Bret Hart this is a, a tease of him turning hill it's kind of like a hill promo uh, then we have a Mankind promo talking about the Royal Rumble I don't know what the hell he was talking about you know Mick Foley um, then we have another then we go to another video package of Farouk and Ahmed Johnson's history. Uh, we show up. They show uh, Farouk attacking Ahmed, and then Ahmed getting his revenge in the locker room. And then, like the next week on Raw, we see the formation of the Nation of Domination. Um, really good stuff. Really good angle. I loved it. Uh, at this time, this was the beginning of the Nation of Domination. So. Um, Farouk comes out, and these are the members of the Nation of Domination that I know. Uh, my boy Jamie Dundee, uh, Wolfie D, were the two white rappers in the Nation of Domination. They're also known as PG-13 in the Memphis Territory. Uh, Farouk, uh, Crush, uh, Clarence Mason, those are just a few of the Nation members that were there with Farouk. Uh, then we go to the match, Farouk and Ahmed Johnson. This was a this was a good match. It was a brawl. It was hard hitting. It was back and forth. It was what you expected out of these two monsters. Uh, I gave you know uh, Ahmed Johnson would pick up the victory uh, off of disqualification, which would set up the big street fight at uh, WrestleMania 13. If you do remember that, a uh, very good match. Another good match. I gave it three stars out of five. Like I said, Ahmed Johnson would pick up the win on a disqualification. Um, 
Then we go to Terry Funk um, cutting his Royal, Royal Rumble promo, uh, you know, in Terry Funk fashion. Uh, then we go to a Nation promo of after the match. Um, Farouk kicks two members of the Nation out. I don't know, it was some uh, lady and another dude. I don't recall their names, but they got kicked out of the Nation. Um, you know, he's telling Paul Matt Johnson this feud is far from over, calls him Uncle Tom. Um, real edgy stuff there. Uh, they're 97. This is, this is like... We're heading towards the end of the new generation, and we're about to hit the Attitude Era. So, you know, you remember how the Attitude Era was at that time. But like I said, I gave it three stars out of five. Uh, then we go to a big man match. Um, we have Vader versus Undertaker. Um, beginning of this match, you know, Vader has no, is no longer with Jim Cornette. Um... They kind of give you the hint, you know, he's a free agent. He needs a manager. We would take on the Undertaker. Uh, these two beasts would go back and forth outside the ring, inside the ring. Very good match. Uh, Paul Bear would come down. Um, Undertaker would beat, you know, beat up Paul Bear. Paul Bear would get back up. He would uh, smack Undertaker with the urn. He would help Vader during the whole match. Um... You know, Vader picks up the win off of uh, Paul Bear, and uh, you know, Paul Bear leaves the ring with Vader and is now Vader's manager. Um, I gave this one also three stars out of five. Very solid match for two big men. Um, I always felt that Vader was one of the best big men of all time. Just his days in the WWF. Um, he really wasn't he was underused by it basically folks uh, then we go to some more promos for the Royal Rumble match we have Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, we have British Bulldog um, then we have a six-man match from AAA I couldn't recall all of the guys names um, they did this because it was in San Antonio, Texas. It was a luchador match. Not as good as the WCW ones that they would have. I gave it two and a half stars. Um, I'll leave that match there. There's really nothing to talk about there at all. Uh, <clears throat> then the Fink's in the ring. And he tells us how many people's in attendance for some reason. Uh, then we go to the Royal Rumble match. This Royal Rumble match was... Better, better than 95, and maybe a slight edge better than 96, but it, the, I love the ending of this Royal Rumble, but there was also a lot of jobbers in this the, this Royal Rumble as well. Um, this, this is the second year in a row the Royal Rumble was not the main event, uh, and that's probably why the Royal Rumbles have declined since 91, 92, 93, 94. And this one would be the same, but here are some of the partic participants uh, in this Royal Rumble. And remember, during this Royal Rumble, the NWO was over in WCW just breaking rating records and everything. So I give them a break for that as well. But here are some of the participants. Uh, a lot, everybody did double duty this night. Um, our first member. We have Crush coming in at one and Ahmed Johnson coming in at two to continue that feud for WrestleMania. Um, Ahmed Johnson would actually eliminate himself by jumping over the top rope. Uh, then we have the fake razor, Phineas Godwin, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Bart Gunn. Out of nowhere, where's Bart Gunn? Out of, if you remember at the time, Billy Gunn was in the process of doing the Rockabilly gimmick. But for some reason, Bart Gunn was still around. I feel he was just a uh, fill-in. Just my opinion. Jake Roberts, uh, British Bulldog. Perio, the guy from AAA. Uh, the Sultan, who was Rikishi. There's your first 10 entrance. Yeah, you kind of got your head kind of like, hmm. What the fuck? 
Mil Mascaraz, can't never pronounce his name right. He is actually, I believe, the uncle of Alberto Del Rio. Um, he was probably like 60 when he was in this match. Uh, they had a lot of luchadors because it was close to Mexico. You know the deal. Triple H, Owen Hart, Goldust, um, uh, C. Ber Berdeco, another uh, guy from AAA, Mark Merrow, the Latin lover, another guy from AAA, Farouk, Savio Vega, Road Dog, Road Dog Jesse James is in this one, uh, Bret Hart. Jerry Lawler, the funny thing about Jerry Lawler is Jerry Lawler was at the commentating table. Uh, then he entered the Rumble, got in, and then I eliminated just like that. Uh, Fake Diesel, who was Glenn Jacobs, who was now King. Terry Funk, The Rock, Mankind, Flash Funk, Vader, Henry Godden, and The Undertaker. Um... This was a very interesting match. Uh, you know, the final three guys in the ring. Steve Austin had got eliminated, but the referees did not see it. So, Steve Austin slid back in the ring at about this time. Bret Hart is on the other side of the ring, uh, eliminating Diesel, the fake Diesel. And Bret Hart turns around, and Austin clotheslines him out of the ring, and Austin... Uh, wins the Royal Rumble. He would be in there for 45 minutes. Uh, he eliminated at least 10 guys. There was points during this match where, like years before, when we, like 95, I think it was, when Diesel did the same thing. Austin would do that. Um, Bret Hart goes nuts. This is the beginning when we kind of see uh, the heel turn in Bret Hart. Uh, he's screaming at Vince, Vince McMahon. Uh, he's going nuts. Uh, and it sets up for a classic match at WrestleMania 13 between Bret Hart and Steve Austin. Um, but Steve Austin wins the 97 Royal Rumble. Um, this is one of three Royal Rumbles Austin would end up winning. He's won the most out of anybody in the history of the Royal Rumble event. Um, then we go back to the Shawn Michaels Sid feud story we go to the Shawn Michaels promo where he just could not get no gayer dude I, I'm not I mean wow what the fuck was Shawn Michaels wearing at Royal Rumble 1997 for real if you go back and watch it check it out he looks like a lost member of the fucking village people Then we go to the WWF title match. We have Champion Sid versus Shawn Michaels. Uh, this was a pretty good match. Um, you know, we had seen previously where Shawn Michaels, uh, or where Sid hit Shawn Michaels' mentor with the camera. Shawn Michaels would hit Sid with the camera. This match went back and forth. Uh, Shawn Michaels would win back the title. Uh, you know, MBWWF champion again. Uh, they had this huge celebration after the match, like uh, him dancing like some faggot and hopping around the audience like a Chip and Dale or something. Um, we gave this match three stars out of five. Um, Everybody's seen that coming. Uh, but not a bad event at all. Overall event. Uh, I gave it 8 stars out of 10. Definitely better than 95 and 96. Um, this will probably be the last Royal Rumble review that I do. I may squeeze one more in. Not real sure. Um, I'll have my Royal Rumble predictions. Um coming this week and we'll get ready for the Royal Rumble man ready for it uh, it's got to be better than last year's when Batista went god I thought they were really right in Pittsburgh 
But this has been Josh from Inside Wrestling Truth. And uh, if you like videos like this, if you like wrestling, um, if you're an NFL fan, uh, please subscribe, man. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Watch the video. Uh, you know, I'm here for really one thing, and that's mainly pro wrestling. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.